We are now going to be looking at section 18, capital D, section 18D, which is the temporary letting of residential property section. So, along with most of your section 18s, this is a, a section which is basically called an adjustment section. Now, what we're looking at in this section is a situation where there is a property developer. A property developer is exactly what it suggests. Um, a person or a vendor who develops property. So take for, think about a person that, for example, builds these blocks of flats that you see everywhere. Those big complexes, right? So they build uh, flats or townhouses, places where people stay, and then they sell it to the public. So they don't rent it out, they sell it. Now for these people, property developers, they are people who are making taxable supplies. For them, the property, the fixed property, is trading stock. So, they can claim the input tax that it costs them to build these buildings. And when they sell those buildings, they have to pay output tax on it. Normal output tax. Now, I want you to compare that to a person who provides residential accommodation. Now, what I mean here is a vendor or a person who rents out places for people to stay in. So someone comes, this is the block of flats that we developed, someone comes and buys it and they take one of these flats and then they rent it out to someone for 4,000 rands per month, let's say. That is a person who is providing residential accommodation. And you'll remember paragraph 12c tells us that residential accommodation is an exempt supply. So what does that mean? It means that that person cannot claim any input tax and if they had to sell it or if they charge the rent, they will not charge any output tax on that. So that's a big difference between the two and it's important for you to know it. But this is nothing new. This is what you've studied already. So again, a developer, for them it's trading stock, so they claim input tax, they pay output tax and a person who provides residential accommodation that is, there's no output tax, no input tax is exempt. So, what's important for you to understand here, down here? And this is again nothing new. This is now something that you've already covered when you looked at change in use. What we're saying here is, if a property developer goes and it decides that it's going to start renting out its accommodation, then there's a change in use because it goes from taxable to exempt. So what I mean is, this person who builds this block of flats, the person who builds it, right, they decide that instead of selling these units to the public, they're going to rent it out. So they've changed from using it as trading stock to providing residential accommodation. That's a change in use. Now, what happens when there's a change in use? This is a complete change in use. So you'd have to look at section 18.1. Section 18.1 says, the moment that that happens, this person will have to raise output tax, and important here, at the market value. So we usually look at the open market value of this, and the date of change of use. That is, before looking at section 18D. Now let's see what section 18D does. Section 18D is a section that, gives temporary relief to property developers who temporarily apply fixed property to provide residential accommodation. Now let me explain to you what I mean by that, what the whole point is behind this section. So again, we have these blocks of flats. They are newly built, right? They are brand new. They were just built. So there's lots of units in there. This property developer wants to sell these units. It's incurred lots of costs, let's say 50 million rands to build this complex, claimed input tax on it. And now it wants to sell this complex and these units. But for some reason, the market is down or they can't find buyers. But now they're going to run out of money. They need cash. So what do they decide to do? They decide to go and say, let's rent these out. So we rent it out for a couple of months and maybe a year. And then once we've rented it out for a bit, then we sell it. 
So we rent it out while we can to make some money, and then we sell it. Now, what's the problem with that? The problem with that is that this change in use section will put kick in, which we just, just discussed, because they go from being a property developer to a person who provides residential accommodation. And then I'll have to raise output tax at the market value of those property. Now, remember what that means. Let's say this was the cost, was 50 million, but the market value might be 120 million. So they would have claimed input tax on this, but now they'll have to raise output tax on 120 million because there's a change in use. What Section 18D does is Section 18D gives a little bit of relief. So before we climb into it, I want you to understand two important definitions which are discussed in Section 18D. I've stated a little bit of my own words here, but please refer to the section also for it. So the first word that you need to know, the first definition, is the definition of a developer. What is a developer? A developer is a vendor who continuously or regularly constructs or improves fixed property, which is a dwelling, for the purpose of selling the dwelling. Now, a dwelling, again, is like a house, a flat, a townhouse, any of those dwellings, remember there's a definition for dwellings that you go and look at. A person who erects that or constructs it to sell it. So it's training stock for them. In other words, it's not for residential accommodation purposes. Then, what does this term temporarily apply here? Temporarily applied says, it is if you are applying fixed property for the purposes of residential accommodation. So in other words, you are going to use these blocks of flats to rent it out to people for an agreement which does not exceed 12 months. So they're saying, these brand new units which you wanted to sell, you rent it out. If you want it to be temporarily applied as residential accommodation, it can't be for, cannot exceed 12 months. Now, important here, this does not mean that you can have three contracts times six months each, for example, and then say each of them is six months. So, I want to rent out this unit, and I sell to the person, I'm renting out to you for six months, and then I'll give you another contract for six months, and then another one for six months. They will look at the total period. If you've rented it out for more than 12 months, it's not considered temporarily applied. If it is not temporarily applied, section 81, the change in use section will apply. So this whole story we spoke of here, that will apply. We'll talk about going to the detail of this now. You'll see all, also over here, I've just made a comment. When we're looking at section 18D, these are the sections which are important. Section 913, which is the timing section. Section 29, which is the value section. And section 1630, which tells you you can claim input tax. But we'll look at it now in the next bit. Okay, so what happens when property is temporarily applied by developers? So those two terms we saw. So if there is a fixed property, which is a dwelling, so a house, flat, right? And it is developed by a vendor who is a developer, who does it wholly for the purpose of making tax and supplies. So this must be a person who rents or not doesn't rent it out. This is a person who constructs property and sells it 100% of the time. So 100% vendor. And if it is temporarily applied as residential accommodation. So there's a dwelling by a developer who temporarily applies it. So remember that means again, not more than 12 months. Then the following happens. That's what this arrow tells you. The developer is treated as if they sold the fixed property. So what happens if you treat it as if you sold it or supplied it? It means you will have to raise output tax, right? You will do that at the time that the contract comes into place. And important here, it is for an amount equal to the cost of the vendor. Okay, so right now I want you to just take a second and see what this is the whole point behind what this section does. They're trying to avoid this change in use section. This change in use section says, if a property developer goes and rents out residential accommodation, then there's a change in use. And important, the output tax is calculated at the market value. At the market value. So remember my example I said here? 
The cost is 50. The market value is 120. Uh, 120. It will be calculated on this market value. What section 18D tells you is, if a developer temporarily applies it, then it is calculated on the cost. So, change in use wants to use that. And section 18D wants to use that. So that will be the output tax. Now, can you see that's a big difference potentially? So here's a simple example. X Limited is a vendor who is a developer. X Limited bought a block of flats that cost 100 rands plus 50 rands VAT. And it then decided to rent out the units to the public for a period of six months. So rent out, that is residential accommodation. Right? But it's for six months. That's less than 12. It doesn't exceed 12. So, this is a developer who developed property which it wanted to sell, which it then rents out. So, let's go through the process. The first thing is, they would claim input tax of 15 rands, right? Because they developed the property, they would claim it as input tax. Now, because it is a dwelling, and there's a developer, and it is temporarily applied, they will have to do what? They are treated as if they supplied it. So that means they'll have to calculate output tax. On the date when this comes into place, which is the 1st of October, and it must be done at the cost. So, it's done on the 1st of October, and it is done for 15 rands. So can you see, 15 rands was the input tax. So if you had to do the calculation, this is what the input tax would be, 15. And this is what the output tax would be, 15. So the net effect is that they will have null. Okay. And that's, that's, on, that's on purpose. Because if change in use applied, you wouldn't use the cost. You would use the market value. And the market value might have been higher. So it might have been, let's say, the output tax on that might have been 20. So then there would be output tax payable. So section 18D is trying to if they create this situation where there's no tax due. Right, so what happens next? So remember now, we saw for section 18D to apply, it must be temporarily applied. So that's for less than 12 months, or not more than 12 months. So what happens if it's for longer than 12 months? What happens if during this rental period, right, these six months we spoke about here, what happens if during that period it's sold? What happens if after the six months they sell it? Okay, all of these are answered to us in sections 18D, 3 to 5. Here are the three situations. So I'll give you this situation how it's described in section 18 5, then I'll tell you what the output tax implication is, and I'll tell you what the input tax is. So the first situation is the developer sells the fixed property during the period in which it's temporarily applied. So in this example we had over here, where it was going to be rented out for six months. During that period of six months, the developer sells it. So remember, they've not done all of this stuff here. Now what happens? The vendor will then calculate output tax based on the normal VAT rules, which means that they will calculate output tax based on the value that they sold it for. Now think about this quickly like this. In my example I gave you here, when they rented it out temporarily, they claimed the input tax when they build it. And then they rented it out for six months, so they had to pay output tax. Now I'm telling you, telling you, and let's say they sell it for 200 rands, and the VAT on that is 30 rands. Now I'm telling you, they now have to pay additional output tax. Right, they sell it for 30. So can you see what the problem is here? So that's output tax. There was output tax calculated there and there. So output tax has been calculated twice. So, that's what the output tax is. What happens then for input tax? Input tax says, section 16.3.0 says, that output tax that they had to raise, this output tax over here, that they had to raise, you can now claim that back as input tax. Input section 1630. You claim back that output tax, you claim it now. So the idea here is 
that the net effect is that they claim output input tax this 15 year and they paid output tax when they sold it the same as it would have been if they had sold it from the start okay second situation the developer stops using the fixed property to supply residential accommodation during or by the end of this 12 month period so if we go back to this example at the end of these six months over here they decide, listen, we know, we've now come to the end of the residential agreement, the letting agreement, we're no longer going to do anything else. Uh, we're just now going to put it back on the market to be sold. There will be no output tax at that point. Why? Because nothing's happened. And you can still claim back the input tax that you raised. So if I use my example here. Okay, so again, quickly. They built it for 150 and 15 VAT. They claimed that input tax. Then they rented out for six months. Section 18D says they have to raise this output tax. Now, after the six months have expired, Section 16.3.0, the rest of Section 18D basically tells that that's 15 rands over there. You can claim that now back as an input tax. So the net effect is that you have a 15 rand input tax claim, which is basically that original cost, because they're saying we're now in the same situation as this developer would have been if they developed the property and you were just waiting for someone to buy it. Right, and then section 18D5C, the developer continues using the property to supply residential accommodation for longer than the 12 month period. What happens then? Now it is considered a change in use in terms of section 18.1 because it's no longer temporarily applied and they have to calculate output tax on the open market value and then they again claim the input tax. So in my example here, we built the property and we claimed that 50 rands input tax over there. We then started renting it out for six months, so we charge the output tax. Now, after the six months expired, they decide they're going to rent it out for another 24 months, let's say. So that will now exceed the 12 months that it's been rented out. So, the first thing is they claim back the input tax, that amount, sorry, that amount over there, they claim that back. And then there's now a change in use in terms of section 18.1 which says you take the open market value times 15 over 115. So again, let's assume that that was the open market value, the 200 and the 30 rands VAT, we then raise that 30 rands. And that's it. So guys, two situations. First, when they start applying it temporarily, you do everything on this slide over here, and then once you sell it or you stop renting it out or you rent it out for longer, you apply this slide.